Business Leaders Breakfast. Absolutely fantastic to have you joining us this morning. And sitting next to me in the hot seat is Holly Manning from Brand Agency Manning PR. Holly, welcome to breakfast. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me. Yeah, fantastic that you're able to join us this morning. Uh, you're well known across the Central West. You wear a number of different hats, but maybe for our viewers that don't know, I guess, your story or your journey, can you tell us a little bit about the Manning PR story and journey as your business, but also your personal journey into the Central West? Yeah, sure. So our journey into the Central West probably comes first because uh, my husband, Kyle, and I moved here in 2001. Um, at that time, I was working for Sydney Uni in media relations and had that job there for 10 years. And uh, then, and that was at the Orange campus, which is now part of CSU. And Kyle came here. We chose Orange because we were in Sydney. I had six years in PR agencies and we wanted to be in the country because I'm from the New England, but we didn't want to go that far away. So we kind of went, okay, here's Sydney. Let's just go like this and see what's around Scone or down south or out west. Um, we had, I'd been to uni in Bathurst and Kyle came from Bathurst. So we knew Bathurst, but we weren't interested in going back there. We drove that little extra bit further to Orange. We knew quite a few musicians out here. Um, Michael Manners had uh, a great restaurant here, Selkirk's at the time. Um, that first journey into Orange was seeing a cattle truck, a guy get out with a cup of coffee, uh, with his coffee in his hand and um, seeing some characters around town. We just went, yeah, this town has what we want. So uh, we, cho we chose Orange and Kyle started working in the wine industry and in sales. And we both developed um, our skills in in PR and media, but also in events. So uh, that's how we came to Orange. We did a little bit of a, a trip to Mudgee where we had 18 months there and I was running the tourism. And then after that, we came back to Orange because we just realized that Orange has everything that we need. So uh, we're back here, we started Manning PR and it's yeah, that's been going for six years now. And it's, it looks like it's been going from strength to strength. Now you've been in the region, back in the region for say 20 years. What's been the biggest change that you've seen in Orange um, over oh, that no. period? Wow. It's, it's, it's a, uh, as a res relatively newcomer to the region, you're right. It's the, it's the amazing array of, I guess, events, offerings, both for local residents and tourists, be it food, wine yep. and events. But have, mm. is that kind of your experience as well? I think it has been, I love the fact that the local local, so we, when you go to somewhere like Mudgee, um, and most country regions, it's all about you know how many generations have been here and, and who is a local. I think the locals have been really great at welcoming people to, to the town who might only be here for a year or three years, but they're willing to invest some time into Orange and, and the locals are welcoming them in. And that makes such a difference to feel welcome and not, oh, you're a blow in, you'll be gone soon. Um, yeah, it feels like everyone's working together towards the common good. That's yeah. what I love. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. It breeds that good culture in the community, which is important. Yeah. Now, it's been a tough period for businesses with you know the bushfires, the yeah. drought and COVID. From your business's perspective, what's been the biggest challenge that you guys have been grappling with? And how as business owners, how are you and Kyle coping and holding up? Yeah, so we, it was quite funny that there was seemed to be a day when sort of everything went a bit pear-shaped, you know, back when it all started. Um, we lost some clients very quickly just because they were in hotels and, and hospitality. Um, but they said, we'll be back. We'll be back in maybe September. We just don't know. It was all up in the air. That was a bit overwhelming, just not knowing mm -hmm. what was going on. So I actually went into Kyle's office and just sat there for half a day and just sort of let it just take over me and work out what I was going to do. I'd just taken on office at Hive um, and was thinking, how am I going to pay the rent? And, but that same day, the amount of calls that we had coming in from other businesses that said, we need to get the word out that mm. um, this is the changes, we need to do a video, um, how else can we communicate with our customers? So we got you know, more work out of that. So we've been, actually been really flat out with all of that. And that's really good because it's probably a nice segue into my next question. You know, you guys are, I guess, brand experts and building that awareness of, 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 of your business. Mm. Um, because it's been a challenging time, what would be a couple of top tips, I guess, you'd give to local businesses that might be tuning in this morning uh, about the importance of building your brand awareness? Yeah, so I think the main thing that we've seen is that um, the businesses that are really well established and know their target audience and their customer, they knew how they could communicate with them. but 
I think also just seeing how businesses have been almost forced into the fact that we need to find different ways to communicate and to sell. Mm. So they've been pushed into that, um, the realm of, you know, Facebook Live and, and selling online and, and using all these amazing uh, tools that we have these days that they've always thought, oh yeah, I've got to do that. I've got to get an online shop happening. Now they've just had to do it. And it means that when we all come back, now that we've got a better season and once COVID's over, can you imagine how good business is going to be? Because they're going to have all of their resources ready to go. So yeah, we've been excited to see that. Yeah, I think you're right. And we've said it in, on this platform uh, many times over. I think one of the positive legacies of this COVID period has been the adaption of the importance of yeah. online marketing, online sales and businessing businesses being forced to pivot. Mm. But that could be one of the positive long-term benefits is yeah. that they've made that adaption and yeah. it's going to hold their business in good stead is, going yeah. forward. Yeah. You've also touched on it um, just before and that was, I guess, your working relationship with The Hive. Yes. It's a fantastic new co-working space that we have on that's on offer here for the region. W why, in your opinion, are those co-working spaces and resources like that so important? Yeah, well, we were so lucky that um, we had taken that space at Hive just before things went pear-shaped uh, because it kind of forced us to, to get into that realm of working in a space with other people, which we needed at the time, just having other people to talk to and the support of other small businesses. And that's what we've been loving is that um, all these... So in my office, I'm in an office with um, four other creative people. So I have graphic designer Claire Fox, um, two girls that are in film production and distribution who are doing films that are you know, going to Cannes and they're working with these big names and it's really exciting to see the work that they do. And Charlotte Gundry that's also in marketing. So with those girls in the office, and we all have our own little businesses and we all do our own thing, but we can bounce ideas off each other. And, and I was finding after six years of working in my own office that was separate, I had no one else to, you know, to um, collaborate with in that way or just to run ideas past. So we've also found that with the four of us or five of us in our office, we have um, during COVID been able to create our own um, little projects and big projects. So we're looking at this event called Orange Open Air, which is going to be a series of events that happen um, throughout next year. So we're really excited about putting that together. Okay. So that's all come out of Hive. And I think other things happen too, because we are all in that space. Yeah, I think you're right. It kind of helps you develop your network, but yeah. it also brings them forward, I guess, those organic ideas that yeah. kind of evolve because you've got that exchange of exchange of ideas. Mm. So keep keep an eye out, everyone, for open air for next year. Yeah, Watch this space. Least. Now, look, we're going to hit our special guest with the Fast Five. It's where we ask you five quick questions to learn a little bit more about, I guess, your background, who you are, what makes you tick. Okay. Best local event or festival in the Central West? Well, it's going to be Orange Open Air. It hasn't <laughs> happened yet, but it will be amazing. Okay, nice. Nice little segue. <laughs> Hidden talent or hobby? Oh, look, I don't know how hidden it is. Um, a lot of my pe my friends know about it, but I yodel and whip crack. And whip crack? Yeah. Okay. I could do it both at the same time, but that could be a bit crazy. Well, look, we're not going to, uh, to <laughs> see, see some yodeling, in yodeling on a Friday <laughs> morning. Early. And I don't have a whip here, but that would, uh, that would be something to see, I'm sure. <laughs> hidden gem of the Central West. So this could be a person, a place, a venue, or an event. So if you had visitors coming in from Sydney and... You know, you wanted to show them something that was encapsulates what makes the Central West so great. What do you oh, think it would be? Gosh, well, look, I mean, the just the nature of Orange. I just think getting out into the and you don't have to go far. Just go out to Nashville or Boronor. Boronor Caves, yeah, yes. it's one of those ones. I still haven't got there. It's been on my list. So. It is. It is amazing. And uh, Fourth Crossing out. Yeah the other way there's some fantastic walks yep. and if you're looking for something to do this weekend I can strongly endorse yes, both of those good weekend for that. now we haven't touched on it yet but we will a bit later your role with the orange farmers market but what would be a great recipe using local produce your go-to recipe or something you like to cook up when you have special visitors yeah, yeah. okay well so the great thing about the orange farmers market is that everything is local so you can pretty much go there and just grab anything and um, you're gonna know that it's you know actually produced here in orange um, I have a couple of things that I love from there but um, I'd have to say recently we were very lucky to have truffles because they couldn't go overseas because of COVID so 
that's pretty special to be able to um, shave a tiny little bit of truffle over your meals, your stews and things like that. That was pretty special. Okay, and look, we, we, I've been told you're a former, you are a musician. I don't know if you're still, still um, involved, but your go-to karaoke song. Oh, has to be Shania. <laughs> I don't know, man, I feel like a woman, or that don't impress me much. Okay, it has to be something like that. Okay, classic, <laughs> classic mid-90s. I oh, wouldn't have picked oh, that, yeah. but, uh, but, but very <laughs> good. Full of surprises. Uh, so I just um, wanted to touch then, I guess, on the farmers markets because yeah. it's it's an important kind of event that happens once a month in our region. Can you tell our viewers a little bit, I guess, I guess about the history of the farmers market yeah. and and what challenges has the farmer market been faced with due to COVID? Yeah, good question. Well, look, it started in two thousand and two, so just after I arrived in Orange, and I think it was one of those things that when I started at Sydney Uni. The campus, that was one of the things that somebody said to me, you, Bruce Smith said, you've got to get down to the farmer's markets, meet Tim Hansen from Mandadjuri Creek, Venison, and then you'll, you've met everyone. So we found that the farmer's markets, if you're new to town especially, to go there you meet so many amazing people, whether they're the producers or people that are just walking around. Um, it's a great way to start your um, life in Orange. So um, the, the market has grown over that time, but it always stays at around 60 stall holders. Just seems to be the natural fit for the market. Uh, but there's such an array of produce there and it all comes from the Central West or the, the region. So um, we've been really lucky to, to watch it grow, to be part of it from the start, to go every week. And the great thing for me is that I'm terrible at remembering people's names, but if you go to the markets, you're in a rush, you're running around, you see everyone, you can do the whole, oh, hi, oh, can't stop got to keep moving but you see everyone it's a really social event uh, usually um, not with COVID so much but um, we've seen it grown and now to be part of it and, and actually help promote it is fantastic we find it's a really special thing to do. Uh, hidden little something you need to check out next time the farmers markets are on that people might not know are there one of the storeholders oh, or some of the produce that might yeah. be on offer. We've had some really interesting new uh, storeholders come in the latest has been um, Mountain Miso so miso soup, um, it's all made locally. So that's been, she came last month, it's her first month, So and she sold out. So yeah, so that's been really interesting. And when are the next farmer's markets? Uh, so it's the second Saturday of every month. Okay. So oh, what yep. would be the date? Whatever that will be in October. No, that's after October, the long October weekend. Before. So look, yes. we'll, um, we'll put the link up to the farmer's markets uh, after today's chat. So if you want to know more of when the next, next farmer's market is on, we'll have all that information for you after t this morning's chat. Now, I just wanted to touch on another one of the hats that you wear. As I said, very busy and involved in the community on a number of fronts, but I believe you've been supporting the Orange City Council with a recent podcast series. Can you tell us about that and I guess what it was hoping to achieve? But secondly, how do you see the, the evolution, I guess, of podcasts in recent times mm. and for local businesses? Mm. And this is one of the things where it was literally that day when we were sitting in the office going, well, what's going on? that podcasts were it. We said, this is the new thing, this is how we need to pivot. Instead of doing so many events and things like that on doing stuff with hospitality, we need to focus on podcasts. And it just happened at the same time we were doing some work with Orange City Council and um, they approached us and talked to us about the idea of a podcast. Dave Waddell was really keen to do something both internally for their guys, because they were all now working in there at home at that time, and they wanted to be able to communicate internally with their staff. So it started out as that, and we were really fortunate that we could establish that for them. We did 10 episodes with them and then we're able to hand it over to them, which I think is important that you can create something. We try to do this all the time, where we'll create something for a client and help them, educate them and empower them to be able to then do it themselves. Makes it more sustainable, it I does. guess, going forward. Yeah, yeah, and we understand that. So. Um, it's been a great thing to be part of and their comms team is fantastic and more than capable of doing it themselves and there's some really great stuff coming out of it I think. Okay yeah no absolutely and I guess you know the council themselves they employ 480 people I think so they're a major employer for the region and I, from an internal perspective that's a good point it's that connectivity or connection that it allows. Mm. Uh, 
off off the cuff, go to podcast or, or a good podcast oh. that you've listened to recently that you think everyone who's listening in this morning yeah. needs to check out. Well, I love... It could be the RDA Central West Business well, Leaders Breakfast because we do have this on podcast through Podbean and good. Apple Podcasts, so that's a nice plug. Yep, nice, promo. nice. And I think that's great. I was going to say, I hope this is also a podcast because so many people these days don't have time to sit and watch, but they'll find time to whether it's driving from here to Bathurst, which is a perfect podcast time, <laughs> um, or yeah, just driving around the region or doing putting the washing on the line. So um, my, at the moment, I'm loving Miss Bossy Boots, which is a friend of mine, Jane Hilston, who's up at Port Macquarie. She's also in marketing. Great girl, her and her friend, Stacey, they have this amazing little podcast, which is about um, women in business, basically. Okay. Jane Hilston, Miss Bossy Boots. We'll put the link up for that podcast after this Thank morning's you. chat. It'll be a fantastic good. one, just another resource for people to have a look at. Now, we've touched about, you know, you guys uh, at Manning PR, it's your brand experts. Digital marketing has gone through a rapid evolution over yes. the last probably five to 10 years. Um, it's, and it's probably with COVID, it's become an even more important platform and avenue to advertise your business. Um, what would be your go-to kind of platform for local businesses that might be tuning in this morning? And could you give us an, some insight onto which platform you think might continue to go like that over the next mm. kind of medium term? Yeah, okay, good questions. So I think for any business in town here, they need to think about, they need to know their target audience and their audience in general. Um, once they have an idea of that, they can go, okay, is my audience, if my audience is uh, a mother of three children um, that's a, like probably in their late 40s, they're most likely on Facebook and using that quite a lot. Facebook will always probably be that tool that we use because we now have all of our photos, all of our history, mm -hmm. all of our contacts, it's all there. So it's always going to be important. Um, and now that Facebook also owns Instagram, and that is definitely my favorite at the moment, um, it means that you've got those two tools. Um, Instagram, it's been interesting to watch locally how many more men are coming onto it. It used to be more female orientated, but now I'm finding that there are more men coming on. And, and it's another tool that's fantastic, especially if you have a product to sell, because people are going on and happy to think about purchasing on that, whereas on Facebook, not so much. So between those tools, I think most businesses in town would you know, really do well if they were on both of those. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the benefit of Instagram as well, it's fantastic for that visual content that you have oh, for your absolutely. business. Yeah. We had Pip Brett on a couple of weeks ago, yeah, and I think Pip I said she that. has over 100,000 followers Amazing. on Instagram and she says for, for the business there at Jumbled it's been absolutely vital yeah. and it just shows you that it can be such an effective avenue to, yes. to promote and grow your business. Yeah. And Insta stories, need to do more Insta stories so don't be scared of it, get in there and play with it. So give us the 30 seconds spiel on Insta stories for the yep. viewers that might not be across it. Okay, so in Instagram there is your news feed which is the lovely three tiles across and it all looks really pretty and that's kind of your, if it's nicely branded and and really pretty pictures, people love that and they'll go, oh, I like that, I'll follow them. So that's nice. But then up the top, and this is what Instagram's trying to push more and more, are uh, Insta stories, which are just, it's kind of like the Snapchat for the older generation. Um, it's only there for 24 hours, um, and it, but it is a story. So instead of just plonking up a couple of pictures, it's good to have a really good think about how you can tell a story in just a few little um, images. So we suggest to clients that you could think about work with us Wednesday, collect a few pictures and put them up and say, this is what we do you know, during the week. Um, or you could get one of your staff to take over the Instagram page and show what they do yeah. during the day, behind the scenes stuff. Um, there's lots of little added images and, and moving things that you can put in there. You can do video, do live. So we do with Orange Farms Market. Now we're doing a live cross in the morning before the market starts. So people are literally in bed uh, <laughs> watching me walk around the market and meeting all of the stallholders and they can you know see what they want to buy and then they come down later. And they can communicate too and talk to you. So it's I love it. I love it. Insta stories. Check it out. Absolutely. Nice plug. And I guess it kind of leads into my next question about you know, Manning PR, it's about brand building and the process, what does the process look like for building your brand? I think we've touched on it there a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I guess the other thing to think about in the process of, of building your brand, we spoke about, I guess, 
your target audience, how that's important. But something that's come across during these chats that I've learned more over recent weeks is the importance of, I guess, your business narrative. And people, um, I think the growth for businesses is moving away from kind of menu, like mm. hard store, hard product, but that people are wanting more of an experience. Yes. Is that reflected yep. in, in yeah. kind of some of the work that you guys yeah. have been doing? So your brand is, it's um, well, it's not your logo. That's not a brand. That's just part of it. Um, it's the tangible and the intangible parts of your business. Um, it's the gut feeling people get about your business. Um, so, and it's about their heart and their head. So there's a lot to a brand, but the story of the brand is important. And that's where we find we're really loving our work because we're creative people and you are creating a brand through the different tools that you have access to. Um, and it is about the imagery and the font that you use and all of that, but it's also just about um, the reputation that you have. And everybody in your business is part of that reputation. So it's important that they're all aware of what your story is. So it's taking the time, and I know it's hard when you start a business especially, when you're trying to you know, just get it going, you need to take the time to sit down and go, okay, what are what is our narrative? What is our story? What are we telling people? And make sure that everyone in your business knows that so that they can also reflect that brand. Um, we have a lot of fun uh, working with a lot of different clients from you know, Orange Better Hospital to the Orange Farmers Market to PJL. It can be in any industry, but to be able to create videos and photography and little bits of information, blogs, stories, it all adds to that narrative. And then it's yeah up to the people in the business to make it come alive. You're absolutely right. There are some fantastic tips right there for local businesses when they're thinking about growing their business. And I think you're right, getting your staff to subscribe to that brand that you're trying to promote. And it, you're right, it's hard. Businesses are flat out at the moment, especially small to medium businesses. Um, they probably don't have the time to sit back and be strategic, but for, if you want to grow your business and take it to the next level, that's often the thing that people have said. Um, and I know it's one of those things, you've got to move yourself away from being the, um, the mechanic, they call it, so to speak, you know, to, mm. to the manager and then to, mm. the, to the innovator. And what you said about um, the intangibles, I think that's absolutely 100% correct. So some- Yay, some, winning. Yeah, no, Must some- Must coffee. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, some fantastic <laughs> insights there. Now, I just wanted to touch on, you, you spoke earlier about um, the event side of your business. Mm. I think it started off in, with Lunchbox Entertainment, but can you tell our viewers a little bit about that and what's been some of the challenges with the events management side of your business? And we touched about open air and what might yeah. be coming down the pipeline. All right, okay, get ready. So uh, Lunchbox Entertainment started a long time ago. Kyle and I have been together for a very long time. I think I was 21 when I met him and I'm now 47, so whatever the maths is there. We try not to think about it too much, <clears throat> um, but it has been a long time. And we started out as musicians. We met on the roof of my little terrace house in Bathurst, rehearsing for gigs that they had for the V8 weekend, his band. And we've played in music together throughout that whole time until recently when we've, yeah, with COVID, haven't been able to. But we've been really lucky that Lunchbox Entertainment, as we called it then, has been with us through our whole journey as a couple. And uh, we've had things from funk bands in the 90s to um, Saddle Rash country band doing the, the Rugby World Cup um, in the early 2000s. And then to come to Orange and keep our music going. And, and then with COVID, unfortunately, we were, that all had to stop. So um, most recently our music, you know, it's been interesting actually, even with COVID, we thought, oh, well, this will give us time to spend more time working on our instruments and our voices. And we just haven't had time, unfortunately. So we're hoping that we're spurred on again um, in the future. But for now, yeah, Lunchbox Entertainment's very much sort of in the background, but it's still sitting there. And we'd love to think that there'll be more music events and cultural events coming out of this. Um, Orange Open Air definitely is something that we're really excited about because, and that's not Lunchbox Entertainment, but that is something that we both um, love working on. So we've always got those passion projects, I guess. And Orange Open Air is gonna be more about film. Um, we're getting, a, Newcrest has been amazing with the funding that they've given everybody or as many people as they can. Um, as part of that, they've given us some money for a big blow up outdoor screen. And we'll be looking at putting on films that these girls have been creating, these incredible films, as well as other films. 
uh, and we're looking to do like romance rom-coms, Australian rom-coms. We're going to do something for around February 14th. Okay. We're hoping if we have time, if we can get the screen in time, that we can do something for Halloween this year with a secret cinema. So you don't know what the film's going to be, but we want to use those outdoor spaces that Orange City Council are as part of their future city um, project. We want to use those outdoor spaces and get people moving around Orange and the villages and using the space in a different way. So I think that's something that we're really passionate about is getting, sneaking creativity and art into all the projects that we do with all of our clients and for our personal projects because we can just uh, see that Orange is a beautiful place and we're not utilising as much as we should. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It sounds exciting and it will help activate some of those spaces at a time where they, they might not be activated mm. normally. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. And you're right, you can look around Orange, there's so many fantastic green spaces, open spaces here. And I think that's one of the real strengths, not just yeah. of Orange, you think about Bathurst, you think about the region. Yeah. It's a real real benefit for, for us. Now, I just before we finish up this morning, I just wanted to touch on maybe where you think you could see Manning PR and the Orange farmers market going over the next 12 to 18 months you probably no one could have forecast 2020 but you know putting looking um, looking forward how do you see things eventuating for your business and the farmers market yep. into the medium term look I think COVID you know as bad as it's been it's also been amazing and I think um, I've really enjoyed seeing the resilience and, and um, you know the stamina that people have with their businesses and and we're lucky that we both know that we can handle anything tackle anything and change our business if we need to so we're very fortunate with that um, and I think in the next 12 months we're seeing more podcasts happening so we've got one coming up for Orange Vet Hospital we're doing one with Cheney Southern soon um, we're doing one with Seed Pediatrics so that's been great for us to be able to tell stories through that so we're going to spend more time on video um, and podcasts and I think for Orange Farmers Market, we, again, Newcrest have been incredible and have given us money to put together a, or to build our website into an e-commerce website so that if something like COVID lockdown happens again and we couldn't have the market, we can have an online version. So we're building at the moment this new website, which is gonna be a big job, but uh, we're excited about that. So to be able to offer the storeholders and some you know, farmers that don't even have a website, some of them, we can offer them a platform where they can promote their produce and sell it. Yeah. So that's exciting. Absolutely, and you're right, we've got such an array of fantastic produce and with Buy From The Bush, and I think with COVID, people are looking at regional areas in a new light. And I think with the fantastic array of, as I said, off tourism offerings, but also products, people might be looking to the Central West to make that move mm. more permanently or coming out for more visits. Because you go down the main drag of Orange over recent weekends, it's been absolutely flat out, which yeah. I think is fantastic. Yeah. Now, if local businesses or viewers this morning want to engage with you, Holly, um, and learn more, I guess, about Manning PR, the services that you provide, and learn a little bit more about building a brand, or they want to engage with the farmer's market, what's the easiest way that they can do that? Well, our website has recently been renovated and I spent a little bit of money on that. So I'd love it if everyone could go on there because, um, yeah, it's looking amazing. So our website's manningpr.com.au. Um, and then also with the Orange Farmers Market, they have their website, orangefarmersmarket.org.au. Uh, and it's got a list of all the stallholders too. So, yeah, you can have a look at that as well while you're on there. But, yeah. Manning PR. It's now, fantastic. Well, we'll put you, uh, the details up for Manning PR and the Orange Farmers Market after this morning's chat. Thank you for coming in this morning, Holly. It's been absolutely fantastic to learn so much more about the importance of, I guess, marketing, building your brand, but also to learn more about the story and your journey in the Central West. I think the viewers this morning really would have gained some fantastic tips out of this morning's chat. But I hope you all have a fantastic day and a great weekend. Tune in same time next week when I sit down with the Mayor of Blaney, Scott Ferguson. But until then, have a great day and a cracker weekend. Thanks so much.